Hi, today I'm going to be reading out of Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7. And the time frame that Ezra takes place is after the, king, after the Israelites have been conquered and they've been taken into exile. Um, and it's been several generations since they've been kicked out of, Jeru out of um, Israel. Um, over this time, the temple in Jerusalem, which was the hub and the, and the symbol of the Israelites' worship of God, um, had fallen into bad disrepair. It was in, in, in really bad shape. And Israel was, for, for most intents and purposes, had been completely disbanded. And no one probably ever thought that they would ever even go back to Jerusalem. But God had a different plan because Israel was his chosen people. And so his plan, and, and Jerusalem was their city, and, and the temple was his house. And so he had a plan. And the book of, of Ezra tells the story of this prophet Ezra who um, leads a group of Israelites back out of exile to, uh, to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And it's just an amazing story about what God does and how he does this. So I'm just going to kind of um, summarize what happens. Basically, the king Artaxerxes, um, a king of Persia, he had... Uh, he basically issued a, a, a letter to Ezra that said, you are allowed to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild your temple, and you can take people with you. So this was his pass. He sealed it with the, with the, uh, the seal of the king, which was the sign that this, it was a, a passport, so that Ezra and whoever was with him could travel to, through the, the, uh, the land and not be bothered. And in this letter, it specifically even said that they couldn't be charged any tolls, they couldn't be charged any taxes, no one could harm them, and if anyone went against this word and did any of those things to this group of people who were going back to Jerusalem to their land to rebuild the temple, then they would be um, punished by death. Not only that, but God arranged for Artaxerxes to fund the rebuilding of the temple out of the royal treasury. So the, the Jews, who were basically slaves where they were, had nothing. There was no way that they would have the materials or the money to rebuild the temple. But God arranged for this king, who was a pagan, he wasn't even a Christian. He didn't believe that God, that the God of the Jews was the only God. Um, but he... But he said, you go back, you take however many people you want, here's your passport, here's the papers to get you through, and oh, by the way, you can have anything you need out of my treasury. You can have all the gold that you need, you can have all the spices you need, you can have all the materials you need, you can use that to trade and buy whatever you need to get this temple back up so that you can honor your God. He didn't even believe in that Jehovah God was the one true God. And so... They went through and they began to do that. They, it took them, I think, four or five months to get all the way into Jerusalem. And they brought with them people that they needed to perform the work. And they had the money and they traded with the, um, the people in the area to get the materials they needed. And in Ezra chapter 7, verse, 20, um, verse 27, it says, Praise be to the Lord the God of our ancestors, who has put it into the king's heart to bring honor to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem in this way, and who has extended his good favor to me before the king and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials. Because the hand of the Lord my God was on me, I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. And so what we can take away from this, first of all, is that whatever God's plan is, he's going to accomplish it, and he'll even use people that, he, that you would never even think would help out to accomplish that plan. No one ever thought Artaxerxes would say, rebuild the temple and use my money. And oh, by the way, here are the implements that my predecessors stole from that temple. Um, I forget which emperor it was, Nebuchadnezzar. When Nebuchadnezzar uh, took the Israelites into bondage, he went into the temple of God and stole the implements that they used there, bowls and cups and things, and he put them in his own temple and used it to honor himself. Artaxerxes said, here, t this is not mine, this is yours, and he gave that back to them. So God, first of all, provided uh, the materials they needed. He also restored what had been taken away from them. And, and then that just, you know, that just came to me right now. He restored what had been taken away from them. And... 
That's what God can do for us. And here's what Ezra did, though. He said, because the hand of the Lord was on me, this is what he did. I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. He took courage. He said, I'm ready to go. Let's go do this thing. Now, you know, he, he had a pretty good idea that he was fairly safe because he had that letter. But he also knew that there were a lot of people in those areas that hated the Israelites. And they could have just ignored the king and said, forget it, we're going to kill him. So he didn't know what was going to happen, but he took courage. So we can do that too. If you feel like you've had, if you're in exile right now, if you're going through troubles and tribulations, you can know that God will provide. And, it, and the provision will come oftentimes from places we don't ever expect it to. Second of all, he will restore what was taken away from you. But what we have to do is be prepared to go, to trust him, and know that I have to take courage because the Lord is with me. So I hope you enjoyed that. Have a good day.